Paul, you've been away uh, the last time we recorded, and I promised people that I was doing a bit of a deep dive into the Swiss exchange, and uh, I've been sidetracked, I'm afraid, and that happens an <laughs> awful lot. Um, so uh, I've decided to switch away from the EU exchange hey. and come back a little bit closer to home. Um, so look, I've got a pitch here for a British publicly listed company. Uh, it was founded in London in 2000s, just after the dot-com bubble. Uh, it's a digital transformation consultancy, and they specialize in software and automation. So we've often said that there's very little tech in the UK, and uh, I hope this one sort of gets the juices flowing. Um, it's about 52% down from its highs last year, so it's a, te it's a tech stock, all right. Um, so digital transformation <laughs> consultancy, what, what is that? Um, essentially, they receive your tech outsourcing. So uh, if you're a big industry and you don't have the required team to physically make something like a web uh, website or something like an app or something cloud-based or a database, uh, then you turn to this company. And a lot of big companies do. So they've got Volkswagen, um, Macmillan, shipping company, Maersk, Mask, mask, um, are the ones that they name, but they're really secretive with this because it's quite a it's quite a busy sector, and they don't want to go talking about all the companies that are outsourcing in case the uh, the, the the you know the the competitors start hitting these people up with cheaper prices. But they mention airline providers with over 100 million customers, a worldwide insurer, one of the largest health tech companies in the U.S., and they're even working <laughs> with the popular SPAC STEM uh, on building out their smart grid system. Now, I've talked to the guys off air on this. It must be a good yeah. SPAC because it's not under 10 it's currently at 16 and a bit dollars so that is a sign of a good spack i think um <laughs> so i've just got a couple of little business metrics for you just to sort of get you off um get you off I'll get me I'll off yeah i'm in my sexy room business... so uh, get me off <laughs> <laughs> couple of business metrics for you paul uh market cap is around four and a half billion uh pe trailing is about 54 forward pe Unless it's depending on the analyst, on the analyst you want to go with, uh, it's about twenty eight. Um, so just it's still the name stop. Just the name stop. Just to just to get you out of your flow a little bit. Just don't name stop. Don't don't spoil it for me, Paul. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so look, stop it, Paul. I'm getting close is... here on this PE of twenty eight <laughs> going forward. <laughs> yeah, he's really getting me off. <laughs> so <laughs> this this company is not cheap, and I want to I want to explain to you why it's not cheap. Um, and the short answer is really is that it's growing like an absolute weed. Um, revenue on average uh, over the last five years has increased thirty percent per year. Cash flow on average has grown a hundred and five percent per year. Earnings on average has grown 33% per year This over the last five. Uh, in the same period, shares outstanding has actually increased by 20%. But I'd urge you to accept that for what eventually ends up being 5x revenue per share growth, 4x EPS per share growth, uh, and over 10 times free cash flow per share growth. And uh, all of that uh, free cash flow growth has been achieved whilst only expanding CapEx by about 4x. So meaning over the last three years, operating margin has improved from a pretty slim looking 11% for a tech company to a much healthier 14.6%. And they've actually managed to do this whilst increasing headcount. Uh, last year, they were about 7,000 employees and now they're at about 11,000 employees. So I'll explain to you how they actually manage this later. Um, so this, this looks like it's going to continue as well, just pulling out some forward guidance for you. They're actually guiding for 46% top and bottom line growth despite macro headwinds this year. And they'll hit this too. Uh, revenue is already ahead of last year's full total with a quarter left. Earnings is already 30% above what they uh, they managed last year with another quarter left. So this revenue is spread out quite nicely as well. It's only about 33% of it in the US, 21% in Europe, 43% in the UK. The top 10 clients account for around 35% of revenue. So there's a little bit of concentration there, but this number's falling every year. Uh, they've added 50% to their top tier customers last year, and that's defined as customers who spend over a million pound a year with them. So I'd expect that, that, that movement to continue to the positive. Um, so look, margins are great. Uh, margins are improving. This is a cash today sort of company. So why is it down so much? Um, the answer here is 
primarily Russia's war in Ukraine. So this company keeps its costs down by employing a lot of tech from uh, sort of the Middle East and Central Europe. So about 75% of its workforce is in a NATO country, but that means 25% are not. Uh, 12% of their workforce alone is based in Moldova. Uh, so they have delivery centers in Macedonia, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia. They also have some South uh, American delivery centers too uh, in Colombia, Argentina, and I think it's Uruguay. Um, so look, Moldova is uh, a target for Russian aggression. It's been touted as the next target for Russian aggression. And that sort of sector of, uh, of their business accounts for about 9% of current company revenues. So I would urge you to consider that, you know, the risks of if this war does happen. Um, at the moment, I think the effects uh, of, uh, of this are somewhat overblown on this company's fortunes. And uh, I think the gains to be seen off the back of this are, are pretty good for a company that's growing like this. The discount you have got to factor in is that all of this workforce it's pretty much in a politically unstable uh, country of some jurisdiction. There's high chances of civil re unrest. There's high chances of outside force uh, unrest. But, you know, risks aside, I, I like this stock up a lot. Um, this company is called Endava. Uh, they trade under the ticker DAVA. Um, it's a UK company and it trades on the NYSE. I really, really tried <laughs> to, fucking, to find a UK company. I didn't find one. Um, it's an ADR, so it's a depository receipt. Um, and it doesn't have a primary listing, so you can't buy it in an ISA. Uh, but mm. it is available in a general investment account. And Paul, I looked up for you. There is no dividend. <laughs> It's uh, you've made it sound absolutely amazing. Uh, one thing that does strike me as 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 bad, like you say, is the uh, political unrest and a lot of investing right now. The rule to go with is don't fight the government or anything. With, you know, look at China, anything with any political problems. And again, I've I've suffered from it as well. Um, it's highly risky, right? Um, obviously. This isn't one for any, probably any of us at the moment, because you can't hold it in ISA. So, yeah, quite very interesting. I do own this stock now, actually, just in full oh, disclosure. Yeah. I bought it in my um, in my other crazy blitzscalers pie. Uh, I shoveled something out <laughs> for it. I can't remember what it was, but I just uh, I was very very taken with this company. Uh, it's a very mm. high risk pie, so it fits in quite nicely in there. I actually don't think. Um, I just don't think Russia's in any position to be threatening anyone at the moment. So I think that no. risk is, is slightly over, over, overblown. But even if they were to threaten and continue that threat out on, on somebody like Moldova, this is... it is only 9% of revenue of a company that is growing exponentially using, you know, a lot of um, different sort of middle and central European companies as well as the South American countries. I think there's room for this country to uh, this this company to grow uh, quite a bit, to be honest. Uh, I was looking at its biggest competitor in this specific sector is, is called Globant, and it was looking at Globant and looking at the competition that I found in Dava and realised that I, I liked it a hell of a lot more. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I mean I think this is a a really interesting company, a really interesting sector, um, and I think it's a smart a smart way of of employing tech. Really, you, you're saying this the yeah. day before we think that. Putin's going to announce something pretty ridiculous that he's going to launch a full-scale invasion at some point. Um, so we'll, we'll see, definitely. But that sounds really cool. Go on, Steve. I mean, your chances of getting Paul to buy anything Russia adjacent at the moment are sort of fairly slim, I think. So this isn't a, a stop <laughs> for him after the after the last one. I had a couple of other uh, related thoughts. Uh, for what I think of it, it's, it's up to the kind of um, viewer or listener to judge for themselves on anything that we say for what it's worth. But um, especially on how you want to calculate the risk of some sort of political action happening, that's that's not ours to kind of uh, present you something you should take our word for, you should think about it yourself. But um, Steve, from what we know of the customers that they have, and I get that they don't tell you about many of them because you don't want to broadcast who might be in the market for these kind of services, um, are they mainly UK-based customers that we know about or US-based customers or a combination or somewhere else? It's actually spread pretty evenly. So 33% in the US, 21% in Europe, and 43% in the UK. So these companies are fairly 
fairly broadly spread out and it's not often that you see a company that you you know that you perceive is dealing worldwide that seeing us as um you know one of its smaller sectors so i that's why i yeah. believe there's room to grow up there oh, that's Go something on. i kind of like actually i and not the fact that it's spread more the fact that it's not us heavy because i'm um, i think of the kind of general trend that i'm hearing a lot about at the moment is onshoring um, not necessarily away hmm. from Eastern Europe particularly, but back towards the US from wherever it is. Most obviously in the case of semiconductor manufacturing, but probably also in some other industries as well, one way or another. Um, and I think I think that's more likely to be a kind of ongoing trend in the US than it is in the UK. So I, I think it speaks well for this company that the bulk of, uh, there's a bigger part of their kind of revenue base that Firstly, isn't the US, and secondly, is the kind of UK. I think the US, UK is more likely to kind of talk about ambitions for onshoring and so on, and less likely to actually sort of do anything that will will make it happen in the same way. Well, it just smacks of opportunity to me because you're seeing here that the 43 percent of their revenues in the UK, you would say that's that they must be fairly well penetrated in that market, but only 21 percent of it. Coming from Europe, that's pretty small. 33% coming from the US, that'll be pretty small amount. I think they only do about 650 million in revenue total. So uh, that just smacks to me of opportunity. I think, yes, I, I agree with you that Americans do tend to employ their own tech uh, and um, they tend to build them, things themselves. But the, the sort of things that um, Endava are building are, are, are quite large sort of web app databases, sort of user experience things. Uh, they're, they're even working on things like uh, buzzwords like blockchain and virtual reality and um and um other things like that essentially so they they seem to be quite broad based they seem to have teams that could cover every aspect and you I mean you'll know just from going to speaking to anybody in tech they kind of have specializations and and you might have a team that's really really good at um looking at the back end, looking after the back end of a system and keeping systems running. But then when it comes to uh, building a brand new system, th their skills are just not in that department. And, you know, somebody like that is when somebody would go, okay, well, we'll get Endava in, they'll build all the front end and you guys build all the back end and, you know, we'll put something together that, that works for the company. So I think that's, that's essentially their business. That's their strengths. I was just looking through uh, the news on Endava stock um, partnership with Snowflake as well. So the the US um, penetration is actually there as well. And looking through some of the news and some of the clients that they've got, it's very very possible that uh, bringing it in on the NYSE is 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 big. I can't believe it's a four billion dollar company. I can't mm. believe it. That's so good. 